All right, hello. We're in the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. We're on 1-12. Uh, we're in a safety program, airmen, notification system, and then going into aircraft types and categories. So safety program, airmen, notification system, the SPANS. The FAA recently launched the safety program, airmen, notification system, SPANS, an online event notification system that provides timely and easy to access seminar and event information notification for airmen. The SPAN system is taking the place of the current paper-based mail system. This transition will provide better service to airmen while reducing costs for the FAA. Anyone can search the SPAN system and register for events. To read more about SPANs, visit www.faasafety.gov slash SPANs, S-P-A-N-S slash default dot A-S-P-X. Aircraft types and categories. Ultralight vehicles. An ultralight aircraft. It is referred to as a vehicle because FAA does not govern it if it is used or intended to be used by a single occupant, is used for recreation or sport purposes, does not have an airworthiness certificate, is unpowered, weighs less than 155 pounds. If powered, weighs less than 254 pounds empty weight, excluding floats and safety devices that are intended for deployment in potentially catastrophic situations. Hmm. If it is not government, if has a fuel capacity not exceeding five gallons, is not capable of more than 55 knots calibrated airspeed at full power and level flight, has a power off stall speed which does not exceed 24 knots calibrated airspeed. Ah, I was wondering about that. Ultralight vehicles do not require any form of pilot's license or certification if they are flown within 14 CFR 103 operating rules, which generally limit the ultralight uh, vehicle to uncontrolled airspace and no flight over populated areas every person flying an ultralight should be familiar with the rules specified in 14 cfr 103 light sport aircraft lsa category in 2004 the faa approved a new pilot certificate and aircraft category program to allow individuals to join the aviation community by reducing training requirements that affect the overall cost of learning to fly the Sport Pilot Certificate was created for pilots flying lightweight, simple aircraft and offered limited privileges. The category aircraft called the Light Sport Aircraft LSA includes airplane, land and sea, gyroplane, airship, balloon, weight shift control, land, sea, glider, and powered parachute. In order for an aircraft to fall in the Light Sport category, it must meet the following criteria. The maximum gross takeoff weight may not exceed 1,320 pounds or 1,430 pounds for seaplanes. Lighter than air maximum gross weight may not be more than 660 pounds. The maximum stall speed may not exceed 45 knots. Hmm. And the in-flight maximum speed and level flight with maximum contiguous power is no greater than 120 knots. Seating air is restricted to single or two-seat configuration only. The power plant may be only a single reciprocating engine if powered, but may include rotary or diesel engines. The landing gear must be fixed, except gliders or those aircraft intended for operation on water. The aircraft can be manufactured and sold ready to fly under a new special LSA category, and certification must meet industry consistent standards. The aircraft may be used for sport, recreation, flight training, and aircraft rental. The aircraft will have an FAA registration in number and may be operated at night if the aircraft is properly equipped and the pilot holds at least a, a private pilot certificate with a minimum of a third class medical. Pilot certifications. We're still on uh, 1-13. The type of intended flying will influence what type of pilot certificate is required. Eligibility, training experience, and testing requirements differ depending on the type of certificate sought. Sport pilot. Sport pilot. To become a sport pilot, the student pilot is required to have the following hours depending upon the aircraft. Airplane, 20 hours. Powered parachute, 12 hours. Weight shift control, uh, trikes, 20 hours. Glider, 10 hours. Rotorcraft, gyroplane only, 20 hours. Lighter than air, 20 hours airship or 7 hours balloon. So 20 hours for a blimp, it looks like. 7 hours hot air balloon. To earn a sport pilot certificate, one must be at least 16 to become a student sport pilot, 14 for a glider, be at least 17 to test for a sport pilot certificate, 16 for gliders, be able to read, write, and understand English, hold a current and valid driver's license as evidence of medical eligibility. Recreational pilot. To become a recreational pilot, one must be at least 17 years old, 16 to be 
private glider pilot or be rated for free flight in a balloon, be able to read, write, speak, and understand the English language, pass the required knowledge tests, meet the aeronautical experience requirements, a logbook endorsement from an instructor, pass the required practical tests, third class medical certificate issued under part 14 CFR part 67, except for gliders and balloons. Medical eligibility is not required. As a recreational pilot, cross-country flight is limited to 50 nautical miles range from departure airport, but is permitted with additional training per 14 CFR section 61.101. Additional limitations include flight during the day and no flying in airspace where communications with air traffic control are required. The aeronautical experience requirements for recreational pilot's license 30 hours of flight time, including at least 15 hours of dual instructor, 2 hours of in-route training, 3 hours in preparation for the practical test, 3 hours of solo flight. Private pilot. Private pilot is one who flies for pleasure or personal business without accepting compensation for flying, except in some very limited specific circumstances. The private pilot certificate is the certificate held by the majority of active pilots. It allows command of any aircraft subject to appropriate ratings for any non-commercial purposes and gives almost unlimited authority to fly under VFR. Bachelors may be carried in flight in furtherance of a business is permitted. However, a private pilot may not be compensated in any way for services as a pilot, although passengers can pay a pro-rate share of flight expenses such as fuel or rental costs. If training under 14 CFR Part 61, experience Requirements include at least 40 hours of piloting time, including 20 hours of flight with an instructor and 10 hours of solo flight. Commercial pilot. Commercial pilot might be compensated for flying. Training for the certificate focuses on a better understanding of aircraft systems and a higher standard of airmanship. The commercial certificate itself does not allow the pilot to fly in instrument and meteorological conditions, and commercial pilots with an instrument rating are restricted to daytime flight within 50 nautical miles when flying for hire. A commercial airline pilot must be able to operate a complex airplane as a specific number of hours of complex or turbine power aircraft time are among the prerequisites. And at least a portion of the practical examination is performed in a complex aircraft. A complex aircraft must have retractable landing gear, movable flaps, and a controllable pitch propeller. See 14 CFR Part 61, Section 61.31 for additional information. Airline Transport Pilot the airline transport pilot, ATP, is tested to the highest level of pilotability. The ATP certificate is a prerequisite for acting as a pilot in command, a PIC, of scheduled airline operations. The minimum pilot experience is 1,500 hours of flight time. In addition, the pilot must be able be at least 23 years of age, be able to read, write, speak, and understand English language, and be of good moral standing. Selecting a flight school. Mm -hmm. We'll stop here. So that's a 1-15, uh, 1-15, and we're going to go into selecting a flight school. See ya.